Welcome to the Insomnia Project. Sit back, relax, and listen as we have a calm conversation that'll hopefully help you to drift off, find your way to sleep, or at the very least, you'll just find relaxing. I'm your host, Marco Timpano. I'm Amanda Barker, and I wanted to, um, while we're all still awake, give a little shout out to one of our most recent listeners. Melissa McNamara. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, I don't great. think I shared that with no, you. No, you didn't. Yeah, big fan of the backpack episode. She listened to it on the plane to fall asleep. A lot of people listen on the plane because it relaxes mm-hmm. them, and especially when they're a little bit nervous uh, yeah. for flying. Uh, thank you to all our listeners. Absolutely. Who we receive Planes so many. Planes and otherwise. Trains and any mode of transportation that you use. ATVs. Sure. All-terrain vehicles. What about ferries? Which is what I want to talk yeah. about today. Not the wings of a ferry, but a ferry boat. Or we could talk about ferries as well. I mean, listen, we could. There are a lot of ferries out there, like Tinkerbell from Peter Pan. Definitely the most famous. Yeah, I'm trying to think of other well-known ferries. I guess Bippity Boppity Boo, is that the name of the three ferries from mm, Cinderella? No. Oh, okay. Uh, nope, that's the fairy godmother who's both fairy and godmother. I don't know how that works. Like, but aren't she, there three was little... Was she baptized? Weren't there three little fairies? You're now thinking of Sleeping Beauty. I There's see. There's a blue one, a pink one, and a green one. Yeah. And their names are... Bippity Boppity Boo? No, it, no. Not Bip, it's like Flora, Dora, and Meriwether, something like that. Oh, okay. Flora, Laura? Sure. Dora? Uh, they all look kind of like Flora, Angela Lansbury. Fauna, Meriwether? It's, it's floor, I, and this might just be the Disney version. I sure. don't really know from the Grimm's world. Although I should, I did a whole book. I, I narrated a whole book on fairy tales. What's the name of the book? In case people, it's want to... a beautiful, wonderful, and important book called Disfigured, uh, and it's about um, abilities, disabilities, and uh, how everything is portrayed in fairy tales and how that influences popular culture. So if you want to listen to Amanda read that, you can find it. Disfigured by Amanda LeDuc. There you go. Yeah. And I'm Amanda Barker, and by the you, way. And there you go. And we're here today. And we recently took a ferry across. We did. Across Lake Ontario. We did. Not, not all the way across, but to no. the little island that happens to be very close to the city. The Toronto Island. That's right. And which makes... Islands. Th- th- there's like three islands that are all... There are three islands. Okay, Amanda will explain this. Well, I feel like in the world of Toronto, which I know many, the majority of our listeners are not, but in Toronto... Um, so Toronto, if you think of Toronto at all, there's a skyline, the CN Tower, so the big tower, the what used to be known as the Sky Dome, and for most of us will forever be known as the Sky Dome. So that's the city, and it lives on the water of Lake Ontario. But sure. um, not too far from that shoreline are a series of three islands. I believe three, although I think actually there's more than three. Three main islands. Sure. Uh, that are known as the Toronto Islands. And that's what we took a ferry too. Is the, that what we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, we're going to talk about Fun. that because I posted a picture that I took mm-hmm. from the island right. onto my uh, onto the Insomnia Project Instagram account, mm-hmm. and it got a lot of likes, and people oh, really like the photograph because it's a really pretty photograph. It's impossible from the Toronto Islands to take a bad picture of Toronto because you are suddenly in a very um, pastoral, almost rural setting. Um, cottagey kind of setting, but the, you're in the city in a way. That was Amanda scratching her head in case you heard that noise. Oh, wow. It's a little uh, ASMR. Yeah, a little ASMR for you. But um, the thing that's interesting is as you get, as you head on the ferry towards the island, you really see the skyline of the city mm-hmm. in such a beautiful way. And we happened to stop and sit at a park bench, and I took a photo of the city skyline from the island. And there happened to be a child with their dad, and the child was fishing, and they just happened to cast, when I took the photo, and I didn't even notice this till someone pointed it out, but they cast the, the rod as I took the photo. Oh, so it's a really that. pretty Aww. photo. So if you haven't had a chance to, check out our Instagram account, and you'll see it there. You've probably also noticed, for anyone who's listening, 
our Canadian accent, as we say, Toronto. You said Toronto a couple times just to oh, sort of, I? yeah, just to sort of set the page for our listeners who are like, what, what? That's how we. Can, that's how you can tell if someone's from the city. But w- once what we he's go- trying to say, I don't think you've really said it. Sure. The what he's trying to say is that Toronto, you lose the second T right. if you're from here, or so they say, Toronto. That's what we say. I yeah. mean. I don't know if that's a lot of people say Toronto, but whatever. No, I don't think so. Okay. But that said, we were on the islands, whether we you were. say Toronto or Toronto Islands, and they were cool. We went to, we went to Center Island. Yeah, we took the so there's three ferries, and um, from left to right it goes Wards Island. If you're looking at them, I guess from the ferry terminal. Sure. From from downtown. It goes Wards Island, Center Island, and then, um, uh, what's the other one? Hanlon. Hanlon's Han- Point. Hanlon's Point. Is mm-hmm. that the name of it? Yeah, I think so. Um, and so they each have their own thing going on, really. But okay. they're all connected. You can walk. They're all connected, so you can, there's bridges anyway. Because sure. they're connected by, like, little bridges, but, like, wa- tiny little bridges. And the islands actually aren't very far no. from Toronto and our island airport is also connected to those mm-hmm. islands, and that's just a a ten minute. That's ferry on ride. Hanlon's Point. Yeah. Oh, is it? It's the yeah. tip of Hanlon's Point. Okay. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Like you could actually nobody should, but you could actually swim to the islands. Like they're that close. Right. But I would say, what would you say? Like a fifteen minute ferry ride? I think I think to where we went was a little bit longer but not much more like let's say 20 minutes I mean it's that. also boarding the ferry and all that but the the ride itself I think has got to be only like 15 minutes or so there's something fascinating about being on a ferry because you get to see the people who are on the ferry and on every time I've been on a ferry you see very interesting people so we saw some people with si- bicycles so cyclists mm-hmm. we see people who are going for a day adventure who are dressed kind of you know, in casual summer clothes and they want to swim and they want to sort of put out a blanket. Then I saw some locals that were dressed more formally. And it's just a fascinating thing to see who's on the ferry and the age of the ferry. Now, because the distance isn't far from Toronto mainland to the islands, those ferries don't do much traversing of water. And so because of that, they're older ferries. And I guess that the ferry was probably built in the 40s. And our friend who was with us said, I think it's in the 60s. So I asked the ferry master as we were leaving. Is that the name of the person who runs the ferry, the ferry master? I think so. Wow. I asked that person anyways what the age of the ferry we were on was. And they said 1940s. So I was very happy. Yeah. And that was sort of an interesting time for the Toronto Islands. They have a very interesting history they're very unique part of this city so um i guess we should maybe explain what each island sort of is known for sure so you can take any of the three ferries over um so the one on the far left is wards island ferry then there's center island in the middle and then hanlon's point on the far right um there's also a tunnel that takes you directly to the airport. Um, that goes under the water. That goes under the water, yeah. a channel, really. And um, so you can take that. You take. You just go to a little building, get on an elevator. Sure. And then go on a really long tunnel um, on a sort of people mover thing. What are those things called? People movers. Is that what they're called? Flat escalators. Flat escalator. Flat escalator. Sure. Anyway, so... That's another way you can get to the airport, and it's a beautiful, tiny, wonderful – it's the best way to travel in and out of Toronto if you have the luxury of – but, you know, there's not a ton of flights going in and out, so you have to kind of be on one of those. But there's – from a few American cities and a bunch of Canadian ones, you can get in and out of there, and it's it's like going into a living room and just – Having a coffee and then going to a little door. Sure. So if you are planning a trip to visit us here in Toronto, 
see if you can fly into the Toronto airport. Mm -hmm. It's called Billy Bishop's Airport. And the it's Billy really, Bishop yeah, Airport, it's yeah. It's really wonderful. Have you ever been on the Staten Island Ferry from New York to Staten Island? I have as a child, but I don't think so. Not in recent – because you and I haven't gone on it recently. No, but I'd like to because I bet there's such a beautiful view of Manhattan as you leave to get to Staten Island. Yeah. Well, you and I, when we used to be docked out of – New York. Mm -hmm. We used to coming in and especially coming out of New York was such an amazing view because we would, the ship that we worked and lived on went right by the Statue of Liberty. It oh, yeah, it was a, great. It was quite a thing to see every week and mm -hmm. sort of see the boroughs and so on. Um, but yeah, so Ward's Island, well, most people take the Center Island Ferry over. And Center Island has a little amusement park it does. on it. So it's an interesting sort of throwbacky thing, but it's there's no major huge rides. It's like the log ride and a little tiny kids roller coaster and a merry go round, things like that. I think the log ride are known as flume rides. A flume. A flume. Yeah. And the park really has a sense of it being built in the sixties, which it, is kind of neat. Nostalgia in the whole place. Sure. So that's the main thing that happens on Center Island. There's also activities and events that happen there. Um, but you mentioned people and their bikes, and I think it's important for people to know that you cannot take a car. No, you cannot. On the island at all. So if you do have a promotional vehicle, like you have to get very special um, permits. permits, and they're not to stay on the island. You cannot, you're not allowed to drive around. No, the island. No. Um, we have done in our long, long ago history promotional things for the Dragon Boat Festival that happens there and sure. so on. But, but um, you can rent bicycles built for two, bicycles built for four. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any bicycles built for one, but I saw all those other kind of like bikes. Like a normal bike. Like a normal bike, but I'm sure there I are. Think you can, yeah. So, yeah, you can rent bicycles, bicycle carriages, or what many people do is they bring their bikes over or they rent city bikes and bring them over. Sure. Big sea bikes they're known as yeah, here. Yeah, here they are. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a really important thing about the island. So that's really what Center Island is. It's um, an event space, an amusement park, a little um, – like a little area to, for like a petting zoo. Sure. That kind of thing. Yeah, we saw some uh, peacocks there uh, – Mm -hmm. In cages and whatnot. And so. Very small. Yeah. But if you had like a four year old, it would be great. Sure. If you had a 10 year old, they might be like, hmm, that's, you know, that's fine, but it's, you know, it's not a huge amusement park. Right, right. And so we went over on the Center Island Ferry and immediately, because it was the first one, it's the most regular ferry. Mm -hmm. And I said, I wanted to go to Ward's Island. That's my personal favorite sort of point. So we walked over, which is a couple kilometers. Yeah, it was a, a it was miles. A, it was a nice walk through, and it's really through like a forest, like not a forest, but like a really pastoral. Yes, it's not as densely wooded as a forest. No, but pastoral is a great way to describe it's green, it. Green, um, you know, there's a path that mm -hmm. bikes and people walk, but it's quite long, and it's very very rural. You know, it's a land that sort of time has purposely. Preserved, or sure. I don't want to say forgot, but preserved. Yeah. And on Ward's Island, our homes, people live on Ward's Island. And it's, to me, very magical. For sure. It's, to live there. It's really, really gorgeous. And um, one of the neat things is, you know, you see these people who are living there, and their homes are very charming because mm -hmm. they were built on the island. So they have, each home looks very unique. And a lot of them are self-built or self-added onto. They have a real cottagey kind of feel. Sure. Which is very different than the city full of, you know, condos and so on. And then there's like restaurants where you can go dine. And it has a real island sort of feel mm -hmm. in that it's very calm and people don't seem to be rushing, which is so fascinating when you come from the city right from the mainland of right. the city of 15 Toronto. 15 minutes ago, you were downtown in the middle of a bustling city. And then you're on this island, just a stone's throw away, and everybody's really calm yeah. and chill and wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to take a quick sip of water here. So stand by. 
it's uh, it's important to stay hydrated, and we're talking about water in Ireland, so, <laughs> so I had to have some. A little drink there. Yeah, so Ward's Island is magical. Now imagine these homes, these cottages, and again, no one has a car, so people, um, you know, they get their groceries usually from the mainland. Um, there's a few provisions you can get there. There's a, a little school for the kids right. that grow up there. Um, you say restaurants as though there's there's two that I know of. Right. There might be three total, but there really isn't much. And even the restaurant that we went to, which we've been to before, I think it's called the Island Cafe. Riviera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they called it Riviera, yeah. Anyway, you know, it's there's not it's you don't have an abundance of selection because things have to be brought on. Sure. There. You know, there's no major stores or right. anything but like that. But the food there. was fantastic. I it was say. fantastic, uh-huh. yeah. And it was, you know, they're very, it makes sense what they have. They right. have chips, not, they clearly don't have a deep fryer, so they right. have chips, not, you know, right. just things like that. So, um, but they made all their desserts in house, which yeah, was, was which surprising was the, and amazing. Before we get to the other islands, hmm. have you been on other ferries? Because I can tell you about the time. Yeah. Because being on ferries, it's so, they're so lovely. Because they're not necessarily fast moving. It's true. We're supposed to talk about ferries, and I'm really going into a deep Toronto Island dive. It's fine. It's totally fine. People like islands too. Islands are very calm. But I went on the ferry from uh, Vancouver to Victoria on those ferries, Mm -hmm. and they're quite beautiful too. I've been on those, yeah, yeah the and, Vancouver one. Yeah, and you can see – sometimes you can see whales, I've been told. I don't think we did, but it was really really a beautiful ferry ride. Do you want to talk about ferries now? Sure, and we can get back to the islands, no problem. Was there a ferry so, a adventure? A tangent yeah. taking me out of the islands and into the ferries. We'll get back to the islands. Okay, yeah. The, the ferry that I know the most was the one that I took from Dartmouth to St. John, New Brunswick. So from – or not Dartmouth, um – I was going to say that's Digby. quite a that's quite a Digby though sure yeah so from Digby Nova Scotia to St John New Brunswick and back again I've taken that twice I think how long is that ferry it's an overnight oh it is yeah it's it's quite a ferry and uh, I left my wallet on one side of that ferry oh no and uh, got on the ferry realizing I had no money no ID and actually somebody helped pay for my ticket my goodness yeah it was in my dorm room at the time when I was going to university. I see. Well, but, but you, it, it wasn't lost. You end up finding your... I got it, yeah. yeah I sure. got everything back and I mailed them. I mean, this was in the 90s. So this sweet couple said, we'll pay for your ticket and you can pay us back. So I got their address and sent them like a check in the mail, if That's you can lovely. believe it. I yeah. believe it. And a thank you, obviously. Maybe a little gift, I don't remember, but... Yeah. I took a ferry once. I think it's a ferry, but this could be more of a boat, but it feels like a ferry. Well, a ferry is a boat. Right, right. Yeah, you're right. Some ferries you can drive onto. So, because because mm-hmm. I'm I'm in the mode of the ferries we were on in Toronto, where you don't drive on those on those ferries. I'm mm-hmm. not thinking like that. But there's a ferry that takes you from Italy to Greece. Oh yeah. From a town of Brindisi in Italy, which mm-hmm. the name of the town is beautiful. But when you're actually in that town, it's not the most beautiful town. I have to say. And it takes you to Corfu, Greece, which mm-hmm. is the closest island to that part of Italy. And uh, that was an interesting overnight one, too. Um, i trying to think of the other. We took, you and I took one to Christian Island. Oh, that's right. We yeah, did take one. that was one. a drive-on ferry, right? Did we get out of the car or did we stay in the car? I think we stayed. We stayed in the car, I believe. That was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. On the northern tip of the Bruce Peninsula. Yeah, that's kind of neat. Yeah, we've been on ferries. I, I was thinking we haven't been on many ferries, but it seems like we have. Was there a ferry that we went on to, no, I was going to say to Martha's Vineyards? No, I mean, we were on a big boat, a big ferry. Right, right. <laughs> Cruise ship ferry. But I, I don't think so. I mean, I think in Massachusetts I probably took some, but I don't really remember. But that Digby St. John one is the one I know the most. Okay. Yeah, there are ferries around the world. So if we get back to the islands, mm-hmm. we're on Ward's Island. We're Yeah, that was an interesting tangent. So we're on Ward's Island. And yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a look like a baseball diamond or soccer field. And it's a community, right? I, I think only 150 or so people live there. Right. Something like that. Maybe not even that many, to be honest. And while they might not have cars on the island, it seems like a lot of them have boats. A lot of them seem to have boats, which is super cool. And, uh, 
Yeah, it's just a really cool, funky community. Now, the people of the islands, it's a long and interesting history, but I believe the story is simply that people were camping on the islands, right. sort of living their, um, you know, temporary housing, the tents, that kind of thing. Sure. And petitioned the city because they, I guess they had lived there long enough that it was considered, I don't know, there's some loophole in the law or something. If you live on land long enough, it's considered yours? I'm point. not sure, like a, so squ the, a squatter's rights type yeah, thing. Yeah, the city made a deal with them anyway and said, you, you don't own this land, but you have a lease. You lease it for 100 years at a time. So that's what the agreement is for anyone who has a house doesn't technically own the land or the house but they own they they're on a lease and there you go it's fascinating another fun fact about the island is that babe ruth hit his first home run on the island yeah because there used to be a stadium right that i don't know i just remember seeing plaques that were detailing. i believe there used to be a big stadium okay back in the day but you know, erosion and weather and so on, a lot of the things that used to be on it and along the Toronto shoreline are no longer there. There used to be a lot of, um, like, piers with, I don't know, like, 1930s-style Ferris wheels sure. and things like that. Sure, yeah. And doesn't, you'll, you'll see old pictures and go, where was that? Now, on the other side of the island is Hanlon's Point. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's sort of famously known for its clothing optional beach. Yeah. But it was named after a rower. Hanlon was a rower. Oh, really? And there's supposedly this beautiful statue, uh, a bronze, of Hanlon. I'd like to go back and go to Hanlon's Point because I don't know that I've ever properly been to Hanlon's Point. Sure. Have we? I don't know. I don't think we have. I don't remember a clothing optional. I feel like that would I would remember that. We've been to clothing optional beaches. We have. Yes. Sometimes by accident. True. Sometimes True. by choice. Where were we? Hawaii? And we got there and we were like, oh my. Actually, was it was in Vancouver, Rex Beach. That was Vancouver? Yeah. And it's really beautiful to get there. But we, we were on, uh, you're right, we were on an we were in Hawaii on an, on a beach. And, and yeah. we got there, it was a beautiful beach. And then all of a sudden. We pulled windows. over and then it was just like, oh my. Yes. That's true. I mean, a lot of beaches are, compared to the U.S., are clothing optional because sure. Europeans are a little different with beaches. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I haven't, I don't think I've ever properly been to Hanlon's Point. And you can't really access the airport. It's its own sort of like. It's its own little ferry. It's its off. Own, yeah, it's yeah, its own. Yeah, I don't think you can. Can you take the ferry over to to the airport? I don't know if you can still. Oh, you, I'm sure you can. There used to be before they built the tunnel, but now yeah. I think it's just the tunnel. Oh, is it? I think so. Okay. Fascinating. Anyway. It is fascinating. You know, um, if you have a ferry where you live or you have a favorite ferry, let us know because I'd love to see photos or know more about ferries. I once asked on our social media about people's libraries, their favorite libraries, and everybody would sort of post the name of their libraries, and then I'd find a little fun fact about that library and, mm -hmm. and sort of post that fun fact. So if you have a ferry that you use or one that you like or a hometown ferry, let us know, and I'll po post a little fun fact I find about the ferry. I'm looking up the ferry's name. So there, there I had it right, Flora, Fauna, and Merriweather. Oh, there you go. I didn't know that Fauna was the name of one. Are those things called fairy doors? On um, you know how people put fake. Yeah. Can you explain that to our listeners? I don't really understand it, but it's a thing that started happening. I think in neighborhoods around here, where parents, I guess, make little fairy doors, and it's sort of like this little door on the base of a tree or in a garden where there's this little door, and it's like for the fairies to go in and out, kind of thing. Another famous fairy would be the tooth fairy. Oh, yeah. She's pretty famous. She is pretty famous. And I wish there was a standardized tooth fairy fee for the teeth that she collects. I wish there was a standardized tooth fairy. Remember, we were in Quebec, and it was the little mouse. Yeah, they called it the petite souris is, yeah. what, is what comes under your bed and takes your tooth or under your pillow and Last leaves you. Last summer, we went to Montreal with our good friends, and their, at that time, six-year-old daughter who lost a tooth and... Uh, the tooth fairy did not come. The petite souris came. Yes, and, we, and left some cheese. Who did we ask? <laughs> we asked, "What is the tooth fairy here in 
in Quebec, and they said, no, it's it's a petite souris, a little, little mouse, mouse which yeah. is really charming and cute. And now when she loses a tooth here. The petite souris keeps coming. Yeah, comes through, travels quite a great distance. In French. Perha- perhaps takes a ferry to Toronto yeah, from Montreal and leaves a little a little token for the tooth. Do you remember the tooth fairy when you were a kid? Vaguely. My mom had made me a pillow that had a special... She sewed a pillow in the shape of a heart, and it had a. she sewed a little pocket on the outside. So anytime I lost a tooth, mm-hmm. I could put it in that little pocket. And when I'd wake up in the pocket, the tooth would be gone and the money would be there. Yeah. I remember seeing How about it. You? It's kind of neat. No, I don't remember ever having a pillow like that. You didn't like have that, a special pillow made? But I remember the tooth fairy coming from my teeth. I also remember the blue fairy in Pinocchio. And in the... She's the best part of Pinocchio, right? In the um, live animated, in the live action version, the Italian version of Pinocchio, one of the first what versions. live action? Sorry. Wow. The, what do you call it when it's, I don't understand. it's not cartoons? But, they call it live action. No, you're right. I just didn't know there was one. The the Blue Fairy was played by Gina Lola Brigida. No way. Yeah. So that's something I remember I don't as a understand child. Pinocchio at all. The story, the charm of it, I don't get it. It's not for you. It's, it's not, not for me. Fair enough. Not for me. But, okay, so as we conclude this episode, mm-hmm. is there a fairy in a story that you actually really like? Which would that be? I would be? love in the, in the live action version of Sleeping Beauty, I'd love to play Meriwether, the little short one. Oh, is Meriwether the short one? The blue one, I believe, yeah. And what's yeah. Fauna? She's the green one? Yeah. And what's she look like? I thought they all look kind of like... She's thin. I thought they all look like Angela Lansbury without bonnet. I mean, they kind of do. Okay. I don't know. That's one picture of them. Oh, she's the thinner one. Okay. Uh, and, but the little blue one is okay. the one that I was married And what's the it. red one? Uh, that's uh, Flora. Oh, okay. I see. Flora and Fauna. Or and maybe the red one's Fauna and the green one's Flora. And do they have different sense. powers? I don't remember. Okay, fair I don't enough. know that they do. They might have different spells, but they kind of work in tandem, right? Right. So what's the fairy bibbity boppity boo? Again, that's Cinderella, not Sleeping Beauty. Okay. You're mixing your And those are fairies too, right? Again, fairy godmother. Oh, okay. So I don't really understand how it works. It's okay. like if you're christened and you want a godmother that's a little extra... You get a fairy godmother. I see. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Well, on that note, we hope you enjoyed this episode where we took you down fairy lane, I guess you could say mm-hmm. it, or fairy fairy stream. Thank you for joining us. If you have a episode you'd like us to talk about things, we had a request from one of our listeners, Amanda, to talk more about the equipment we use. I guess our episode okay. on the equipment really helped them fall asleep, so we'll do that in an upcoming episode. Until then... We hope you were able to listen, get a little fairy dust sprinkled on you, and sleep.